We turn back now to the deadly wildfires in Hawaii. At least 55 people have been killed in the fires, and that number is expected to keep rising. The fire started burning earlier this week, and experts say that climate change is no doubt partially to blame. Hawaii is defined by its lush vegetation, but in the last few weeks, the island of Maui has been unusually dry. According to the U.S. Drought Monitor, almost 16% of the island is in what is considered a severe drought right now. That's caused by a significant drop in rainfall. Hawaii first started experiencing long-term declines in average annual rainfall decades ago, which experts believe is caused in part by rising global temperatures. Joining us now, climate reporter for The Messenger, Dave Levitin. Dave, good to see you again. So let's talk about the role that climate change appears to have played here uh, in Hawaii in terms of the conditions on the ground. We mentioned uh, the drought, um, but also the hurricane that came through. Give us, give us a sense as to what happened. Well, thanks very much for having me. So yeah, there's, there's a few things that are at work here that climate change is at least partially you know, a part of. Um, one, as you said, the declining rainfall ha is obviously a big issue here, and that is at least partially related to clouds getting thinner as temperatures rise, which of course is related to the changing climate. Uh, thinner clouds means less precipitation, means you have more likely chance for you know drier conditions that we have seen in Maui recently. Um, then obviously hurricanes as well are sort of getting juiced a little bit by warmer ocean temperatures. So the hurricane that is actually hundreds of miles away, but is probably fanning the flames is also of course related to the changing climate. Um, basically everything that we're seeing is happening in a changed world. So the baselines are just sort of shifted. And that means that you're much more likely to get these you know, very dry, very dangerous conditions that we have seen to create these, as you said, absolutely horrific fires. And the speed of this fire is hard to even fathom to overtaking people in just minutes in their homes, their cars, some folks even trying to jump into the ocean uh, to escape. Truly, truly terrible. But, but Dave, we're not just seeing the effects of climate change in Hawaii, of course. We've seen it all summer long here on the, on the mainland. The South has been dealing with record-breaking heat. Um, and, of course, there's study after study that suggests the planet has never been hotter than right now. Tell us more. So yeah, July, the month of July was the hottest recorded month in human history and likely the hottest month in tens or even hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, and that's because July is the warmest month of the year and this was the warmest July that we have ever seen. Um, and that has manifested in heat waves in a number of places, including of course, across much of the Southern and Southwestern US as well as Europe and China and elsewhere. Some scientists recently um, basically found that those heat waves, especially in Europe and the US, would have been essentially impossible without the influence of climate change. So what that means is that we have created a, a, a world where a heat wave that could not have happened before is now relatively likely, is going to happen more and more. And obviously the, those heat waves carry a lot of, of danger for vulnerable people, for the elderly, for people who work outside. And we have seen quite a lot of, of, of really harsh conditions in particular, you know, in Texas, in Arizona, and in other parts of the South as well. And Dave, real quick, last one. Is there an expectation here on the eve of hurricane season that we could have the capacity for, or the potential for a series of really deadly storms? So yeah, just yesterday, actually, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, revised their estimate or their projection for uh, the Atlantic hurricane season. The season technically started June 1st. It runs through November, but August and September are the peak of hurricane season. They revised their estimate upward, basically because of the extreme ocean temperatures that we are seeing. Um, people might have heard about you know, very hot water around Florida, and we've actually seen that across the Atlantic, these marine heat waves. Hurricanes are, of course, fueled by warmer ocean temperatures. So these storms, as they cross the Atlantic, if they're going over, you know, very, very warm water, that can make storms, uh, you know, much stronger and faster. So there is a chance. Obviously, it's very difficult to, to predict specific hurricanes and the tracks that they take. But there is a chance that we will see some very strong storms because of that warmer water, thanks to climate change. Yeah, we may have to brace ourselves. We should know the Biden administration is supposed to put out some climate change measures later today. It's such an important topic. We will stay on it. We're so glad you're here. Dave Levitan, climate reporter for The Messenger. Thank you for joining us this morning. Up next here on Way Too Early, we'll get into President Biden's push for another new aid package for Ukraine's ongoing war effort.